In the full 10 years that fans of A Song of Ice and Fire have so far been waiting for the next book in the series, the maesters of YouTube and Reddit have laid out their theories for almost every unsolved mystery in the story so far, and I think by now I might have read just about all of them. But in this one little area, I think I might have the jump on everyone. North of the Wall, Bran Stark and company are guided by the mysterious undead figure Cold Hands, dressed as a man of the Night's Watch and riding a great elk. In the Game of Thrones TV series, Cold Hands turns out to be Benjamin Stark, John and Bran's long-lost uncle. And George R. R. Martin's editor apparently suspected the same, writing as much in the margin of one of his manuscripts, only to be quickly disillusioned by Martin. So clearly, in the books at least, Cold Hands is somebody else. Fan theorists online favour a number of historic characters from the world of Ice and Fire for the real identity of Cold Hands. From the Loyalists of Bloodraven, to one of the Twelve Companions of the Last Hero, to the Night King himself. In this video I'll be making the case that Cold Hands is actually the War King, one of the last rebels to the stark domination of the North. From well after the Long Night, but before the coming of the Andals. Some will say that this is contradicted by what we know of the War King from the World of Ice and Fire book, but look again at what the text specifically says in the page on the Kings of Winter. Chronicles found in the archives of the Night's Watch at the Night Fort, before it was abandoned, speak of the war for Sea Dragon Point, wherein the Starks brought down the War King and his inhuman allies, the Children of the Forest. When the War King's last redoubt fell, his sons were put to the sword, along with his beasts and green seers, whilst his daughters were taken as prizes by their conquerors. From this chilling paragraph, it is generally assumed that the War King was slain along with his sons, his beasts, and his green seers. But of the War King himself, the text only says that he was brought down. It is possible this could only refer to the ending of his power and his kingdom. So why would the Starks keep him alive? after killing almost everyone else around him and seizing his daughters. Perhaps because his public surrender was more valuable to them than his death, legitimizing their rule and denying a martyr to anyone who might follow his example. The killing of his beasts and of the children of the forest who aided him may have been thought enough to neuter him as a threat. Notice also where this story comes from. The tale of the War King comes to us from the archives of the Night's Watch, not from the libraries of Winterfell or the Citadel of Old Town, even though it was a significant event in the creation of the Kingdom of the North. The libraries of the Night's Watch are certainly impressive, but supposing this story was originally a kind of personnel file, the War King may have been sentenced to serve out his days in the Night's Watch, bound by his oath, from ever again challenging the rule of the Starks. The War King's skin-changing powers would have made him an effective ranger north of the Wall, Perhaps they even protected him from the icy magic of the Others, allowing him to resist the enslavement after death the Others impose on those they raise as whites. He may even have been chosen for this very purpose by his former allies, the Children of the Forest, who still dwelt north of the Wall. The War King could then have become their agent, and remained so even after they had found a more powerful ally in the Three-Eyed Crow. Assuming my interpretation of the War King story is true, I think he makes for a better fit than most of the other candidates for Cold Hands. In A Dance with Dragons, Leaf, one of the children of the forest holed up in the cave beyond the wall, describes Cold Hands to Bran as having been killed by the others long ago. Leaf is hundreds of years old. A loyal man of Bloodraven could only have died fairly recently within Leaf's own lifespan. She might have been trying to reflect Bran's own perspective when she used the term long ago, but there is no obvious reason why she should make the effort. It seems more likely that long ago means long ago even to the children of the forest, many hundreds or even thousands of years ago. This would seem to strengthen the claim for a truly ancient figure, like the Night's King, the last hero, or at least one of the latter's twelve companions who may indeed have been the founders of the Night's Watch. Although this would make concrete certain stories that George R. R. Martin seemed to want to remain ambiguous, like the myths and parables of our own world. For me, the story of the War King strikes the perfect balance, ancient enough to evoke a time when the old gods were more powerful in Westeros, but not so old as to change the meaning of this world's foundational myths. 
So that's my pitch. Thanks for watching this video and stay safe.